So those are the three big ones that we're going to deal with. Now, RESPA has some other things that give it heartburn, but these next couple things are not illegal. This first one's called an ABA, an arranged or affiliated business agreement. No, it's not. I have trouble with this because they just changed the name about three years ago. It's called an affiliated business arrangement. Used to be called a CBA, a controlled business agreement, but they've changed it. What this says is, if there is a company that is going to make money off of the consumer in two different ways, I have to tell the consumer. Let me give you the example and it'll make it really clear. I have a controlling interest in my real estate brokerage. I also have a controlling interest in a mortgage company. If that buyer uses my mortgage company and my brokerage, I'm getting paid twice from them. That is called an affiliated business agreement. I have to tell my client, do you understand I'm making money here and here? And they have to agree and sign a document saying it's okay. They have the right to say no. If they do, I would have to say, okay, which one do you want? Well, we'll use your mortgage company, okay? Then I got to give you away to another realtor. Or we'll use your agent because we like them, okay? Then you've got to go find another mortgage company. I have yet to have a client not sign this. Most of them actually see this as a benefit because now they've got one person, i.e. me, that they can call for one of two things, for either one, instead of having two people to try and get a hold of. So it's called an affiliated business agreement, has to be signed in advance, they have the right to say no, and it's when there's a owner of more than one company making money off of them. I knew a guy that owned a mortgage company and a title company. F.C. Tucker. F.C. Tucker has a real estate agent, has a mortgage company, and F.C. Tucker has a title company as well. That that client would have to sign this ABA agreement. There are some other RESPA things that aren't as important to us as we'll get on. Uh, like the servicing statement. The servicing statement, remember we've talked about how the lender sells your loan? They now have to tell you if they're going to sell their your loan. All right? So if Fifth Third plans on selling their loans to PNC, they have to tell you in advance and you have to kind of agree to it. What if you don't you agree? Advice. The only way you would say no is to not take their money. Um. Question? No? Okay. Are we going too fast? All right. So that is the, the servicing or the transfer. Now, on the next page, you see this TILA. Here, we're getting to a TRID. The TRID is the integration of the truth and lending and the RESPA that we just talked about. It reduces four forms into two. There were two for TILA, two for the RESPA, and they've combined them into two different documents. Now, there are just two documents. The first document we want to talk about is called the loan estimate form. The loan estimate form. The slang for that is the LE. 
all right? The loan estimate form deals with the costs to buy a loan. You guys all understand when you buy a $100,000 house, you are going to pay more than a hundred thousand for it, right? You have got closing costs that you're going to pay. One of the most heartbreaking moments I had as a parent is when Ian, and you guys know Ian, was about four years old one day. We were at McDonald's and he wanted a cheeseburger and he had a dollar and he said, Dad, I, I want to buy a cheeseburger. Can I buy a cheeseburger with my dollar? I said, sure. So he came back to me and he said, dad, I don't understand. It was a dollar four, but they said it was 99 cents. And I said, well, that's the man trying to hold you down. No, that's not what I said. I said, son, there are fees associated with that. You got to pay taxes. He's like, well, but they advertised it for 99. And it just, you know, it just crushes you to have to say, yeah, the world's screwing you. Get used to it. Same thing happens here. You've got fees that are going to be involved in buying this house. These fees are going to be given to you on this loan estimate form. When a person makes application to get a loan, and there is actually a strict definition of what the word application means. We're not gonna go over it in this class, but in the mortgage class, they have to give six pieces of information for it to count. If they get make application, the lender is required under TRID to send them this loan estimate form within three business days, guaranteed that's a question on your loan, test all of the fees that it's going to cost to close this property so you buy a hundred thousand dollar house i'm making up numbers it's going to cost you five thousand dollars in fees the loan estimate form is that number right there it will tell the client, i.e. the borrower of money, how much this loan is going to cost them. And this loan estimate form must be given to that client within three business days of making the application or the mortgage broker is in violation of the TRID rule. What this number allows now is the consumer, one, to have transparency in their costs, and two, allows the consumer to now shop for a better mortgage, all right? Now, this $5,000 number on the loan estimate form is made up of three different types of numbers, different types of numbers. The first number is called a zero tolerance number. Zero tolerance means whatever the lender says it is, come hell or high water, that's the number they're going to pay at closing. There is zero tolerance. So when the lender quotes this number, in 30 days when that buyer closes, that will be the number I quoted you because there is zero tolerance in it. These are numbers that the lender owns and can control, like the loan origination fee. If he tells the consumer it's one point, it damn well will be one point when they close. It cannot be anything else. Barring significant changes, we're not gonna get into if there's a change and the consumer changes the loan and things like that. We're talking just as a general rule. 
So numbers the lender controls are zero tolerance, all right? The second group are called 10% tolerance numbers. These are numbers the lender doesn't control, but recommends to you, like title company. If the lender says, we really like Chicago title, and we would like for you to use them because our software integrates, yeah, blah, 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 whatever. Whatever price they quote on the loan estimate can be off plus or minus 10%. So they will tell you, hey, it's $500. It can be 450 or 550. It's plus or minus 10%. Numbers the lender doesn't control, but recommends. Now here's the third number, and this is the one that's always funny to me. The third number are what they call infinite tolerance. He literally can go, here's a number, and it could be way off. These are numbers that the lender doesn't control and he doesn't recommend or give you advice on, like homeowner's insurance, all right? So zero tolerance would be like loan origination fees. 10% might be a title company. Infinite tolerance might be your homeowner's insurance. And he'll say, uh, okay, 1,500 square foot ranch, eh, 900 bucks. Because that's a cost, you gotta buy a policy to, when you buy the house. It could be 450, it could be 1,300. But because it's an infinite tolerance, he is not in violation, all right? Now, I will tell you a smart lender or a smart mortgage broker in today's world, literally will ask you, hey, Shauna, who's your homeowner's insurance? Prudential, okay. Before he sends this to you, he will call Prudential and go, hey, three bedroom, two bath, 1,500 square foot on the south side of Indy, what do you ballpark me? And the insurance company is gonna go, eh, it's probably gonna be 850, 900. That's the number he'll put because he wants to be as close to the real number as possible so that his $5,000 number is the best number he can give to the consumer because if it's too high, the consumer is gonna go, well, screw that guy, I'll go find a loan somewhere else. So while he is allowed an infinite tolerance, there is no mortgage broker in the right mind that would ever put $1.8 million because legally that would be correct. But practically, the consumer would go, I ain't getting that loan. So while it is, has allowed infinite tolerance, they typically will get really close because they're going to search out and find who your insurance is and how much and call them and get a kind of a ballpark. All right. So that's the first form. It's called the loan uh, estimate form. It's an estimate of the cost of the loan. That is that $5,000 that we looked at. Now the second form is called a closing disclosure or the slang is CD. And a lot of mortgage brokers will tell you, oh, I'll get the CD out to you later today. That's the closing disclosure form, all right? That is the itemized version of that. All right, so the loan estimate form, while it is broken down, it's gonna give you a number and an estimate of your monthly payment or uh, things of that nature. The closing disclosure is the itemized list of where all those fees go. This fee goes to the lender, this fee goes to the real estate broker, this fee goes to your insurance company, this fee goes to the title company, and it will be a itemized list 
of where all of these fees go so that everybody knows who's getting what. That closing disclosure must be given to a consumer once again, three business days prior to closing because the lender gets a chance to look at it. And there is no way to circumnavigate this. So if you haven't got a closing disclosure on Monday, you are not closing Tuesday because the lender gets three days to look at it. You get the closing disclosure on Monday, Tuesday, Wednesday, Thursday, Friday is the first day you can close, period. All right, because the lender gets three business days to look at it, to make sure that everything is right. You also get to see it to make sure everything is right. And what's the first thing you look at on the closing disclosure? The commission to make sure we're getting paid correct. That's the first thing I always look at. Is that right? Yeah, okay. No, that's not true. But you get to see the purchase price, the earnest money that got deposited. You'll get to see several of these and practice and you'll see what I mean, all right? So over in your book on page 266, is a whole, there's the loan estimate form. We're not really going to go over the form in general. Then on page 269 is the closing disclosure. And you can see where the itemized list of who's getting paid what and where it goes. So we're way over on page 274 now. 